uh, we are now live streaming on YouTube, so it's the official start of our Wednesday morning meeting of the Appropriations Committee. And we are going to jump right in uh, to an amendment that's being offered by Representative Donahue on the um, stimulus equity bill that was on the floor yesterday. And uh, welcome, Anne. It's always good to have you. Teresa, if you could pull the amendment up um, and we can read it. And Anne, if you would like to just introduce yourself and uh, for the record and walk through uh, this very short um, amendment. Yes, Representative Van Donahue, thank you. Um, and I guess we can walk through it first and then I'll um, explain from a background point of view. The walkthrough, as said, is not difficult. Uh, it changes um, one number in subdivision A4, which currently says 18 and inserts instead the number 17. Um, Risa, so let's go back to the, uh, the, to the squares with all of us so we can have the conversation and all see each other. Because I think we can remember that change. Okay, Probably. sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yeah, this, this um, came up for me just uh, after hearing the presentation and uh, discovering, which I hadn't known, as I, I said in my comments on the floor, that 17-year-olds um, were not included in the federal um, uh, program. And my first instinct and first reaction was to say, well, this, this bill is about uh, capturing people who were left out. And if 17-year-olds were a glitch in the federal system, then I would like to propose that we um, bring them into this bill. In other words, include 17 year olds um, who did not have uh, an immigration barrier, but who uh, were left out from the federal program. And actually even just in hearing the further debate, it became clear that it wasn't some uh, unintended um, glitch. There were reasons behind it. Um, and, it and it was specific to how that program had been set up. Um, it didn't change my feelings that we were um, uh, creating an additional uh, core inequity if we were um, adding people based on uh, having been left out because of their uh, immigrant status, but not intending to add um, other people who um, would not have been in the federal program for other reasons. And that would include um, our, uh, you know, the definition of uh, a child as being um, up to age 17, but not including 17 years old. So we would have the um, anomaly of creating in this new bill, uh, a category of people who um, became eligible because of an immigration barrier, except that they wouldn't have been eligible without the immigration barrier. Um, that may not be a, that may be an awkward way of saying it, but I, th I think the committee um, understands the, the issue or the problem. Uh, and this um, proposal would simply um, align uh, our initiative with the way that it was handled uh, in the in the federal uh, bill. Um, and this was the way that legislative council said uh, it would accomplish that alignment uh, just by by changing that number. Thank you, Anne. We did take additional testimony yesterday from Legislative Council to understand the 17-year-old provision and uh, those up to 24 who were dependents. And Michael Grady did send, um, I don't know if it got sent out just to me or to everyone, and I'll check about um, you know, a further explanation about uh, relatives and, um, and the CARES Act. So we, we did hear and, and fully understand that the 17 year old was based on the tax credit definition. Are there any uh, questions or comments that any committee members have for uh, Anne regarding the amendment? Uh, we did take, uh, we did have committee discussion on uh, 18 versus 17 uh, yesterday as well. And um, so if there are no questions for Anne, and we did have our committee discussion yesterday and, and we did take a straw vote so that we would understand what others were thinking in the committee, are we ready to take a vote on this? And- uh, Kitty, I Jeff? Put, put my hand up there, but um, I, I just uh, did wanna 
essentially, I was about to say the same thing that you did to Anne. That we we um, you know after after the discussion on the floor and hearing that you were going to propose an amendment and then getting a little bit of an indication about which um, direction you were going to go with your amendment, we you know we had much the same conversation that you've just explained and and um, and will on the floor, I assume, um, and and came to the same conclusion that we. You know that we would inadvertently be creating an inequity uh, among those who um, were left out of the CARES Act um, eligibility. Um, and while I think our committee agrees that it uh, it seems um, it, it it there didn't seem to be a good reason in the why the feds did that. We understand how they did it or or what caused it, but. Um, but that it was clear that we can't rectify the, the federal, you know, programs uh, oversight um, with state money. And so, um, I, like I say, we can't have come really to the same conclusion that um, in order to, in order to do what we've always intended to do, which is to provide equity between um, those folks who um, were eligible for the CARES Act and those folks who were not uh, because of immigration status, um, that we'll, we will I'm about to recommend that we um, find your amendment favorable. Thank you, Chip. Um, is there a second? You need I'll a second. 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 Okay. Well, um, and uh, Mary, go ahead. I j just in the vein of discussion, I, I wanted to say what Chip already said, so I won't attempt to say it again other than to say I hope that the feds will address this inequity at the federal level and then when that is taken care of there that we will have an opportunity again at the state level to fill in gaps that may have been created so I, I this is not the end of a conversation. I think it's an excellent catch and thank you, Anne. Going forward, I think we're gonna to continue to try to right wrongs. Thanks. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Anne? I would just say, I, I echo that. As I said, my, my first instinct was to say, well, let's bring in that missing group. This is about equity. And that became clear that that was not a viable way. So um, I appreciate and agree with uh, Representative Hooper on uh, future hope. Uh, Legislative Council yesterday did state that it's on the radar, but whether, I mean, we have no idea to know what will happen at the federal level, but the, the good piece is that our fiscal note includes this, it would be a very small catchment, um, you know, in, in, this, in this group that we're trying to uh, address. And uh, so the fiscal note, if that changes on the federal level that we have the capacity within this bill to address um, the 17 year olds. Um, all right, and so we have a motion on the floor. We have a second, is there any other further discussion? If not, I would ask the clerk to call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Conquest. Yes. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Helm. Um, we'll continue. I'll come back. Again to text Bob that we're on a roll call, please. Representative Hooper. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Lanfer. Yes. Representative Myers. Yes. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Yacovoni. Yes. Representative Toll. Yes. Great. And Bob, you there? Bob is here. Yes, because he is here and not absent. I, I just need him to um, unmute. Bob, can you hear me? Um, because if you are present, I believe you should vote. Um, his ceiling is present. Excuse me? His ceiling is present anyway. Yes. yes. I see his shoulder. I see a bit of his I shoulder. Yeah, I do too. Um, I'm giving him a quick call. 
<laughs> Mary. You're closest, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Poke <Okay>, Mary. <laughs> oh. Diane, we will hold the vote open as long as Bob is here. Okay, I'm, okay. Coming, I'm not getting an answer. Uh, I know that he is, um, he has, he's doing business, he's working at the same time. Okay, Anne, thank you very much for coming in. Um, we appreciate your attention on the floor and uh, we look forward to supporting <coughs> your amendment once we get back to the floor this afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, so before we close uh, that, um, 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 Amendment out. We'll wait for Bob uh, to come back and vote. I did want um, to walk over the documents uh, with, the, with everyone, the documents that we're going to see at the Caucus of the Whole at two o'clock. Hey, so, yes. Uh, just before we leave this, can I just tell the committee um, what I found out about the penalties for disclosure of personally identifying information? Yep, yeah, but first I want to take Bob's vote. Bob. Um, so we, I'm sorry. We just, that's okay. We just took um, a roll call vote on the Donahue Amendment, which was to uh, follow the federal guidelines and change our 18-year-old date back to 17. At this time, all members have voted, and the vote is 10-0, and we would like your yep. vote. You've got it. I'm a yes. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and okay. I appreciate very much your tolerance of me. I couldn't avoid that phone call. No, I, I, I explained to the committee that you have a job and you're working at the same time. And so you're playing some balls. And uh, just keep just, them all in the air, Bob. Don't let them drop. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. They always stay in the air. They never mm -hmm. come down. <laughs> so Chip, it's 11.00 and you're going to report this when... Right, okay. Okay, Teresa, you'll do the work to uh, electronically send that out and Chip, you'll confirm it. Yeah, do I have to do anything with the clerk's office oh, about no, that? No, you don't need to do anything. And when you're on the floor with the amendment, you would just say that the committee voted. Great. Okay, thank uh, you. I just wanted to give the committee a quick heads up so um, you you have the information before I say it to the um, rest of the folks on the floor. So yesterday, Mike Yantoshka had asked me what the penalties were for disclosure of personally identifying identifying information. Um, and I said that I didn't know, but that I would get back to him with the answer and that I would let the, the body know. Uh, it turns out that essentially there really are no penalties for that. Um, according to Mike O'Grady, uh, who checked with Becky Wasserman, who actually drafted the, the legislation that's referred to in our bill, um, uh, that there are uh, no penalties set forth um, under that section, uh, 20 VSA 4651, um, the Judiciary Committees at the time chose not to impose a criminal or civil penalty. Um, the Attorney General could um, seek an injunction or other equitable relief, but that's not, um, you know, that's just sort of a general power that the Attorney General has um, and not a penalty associated with that particular um, prohibition about releasing that information. Um, I, I'll say that, uh, and I will probably suggest that the um, this is an area that legislature um, may very well want to look into, uh, because it's not just in our bill that we have a prohibition against releasing that kind of information. Um, and if there's no penalty, that there's um, there's no real it weakens the prohibition. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chip, for looking into that. And, and the, the point that you said, it was a, a decision made by the Judiciary Committee not to impose them. Um, and your recommendation is going to be to, this is a January issue, knowing the fast track that we're on now to try to um, develop penalties in a policy committee to catch up with a bill. We won't be here that long in, in September. So that, that will be uh, part of your, for the committees of jurisdiction to look at it at, at, at when, when we return. Yep. Thank you. Questions for Chip on the penalties? No, I'm okay. just surprised. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chip. Now I'd like to um, just turn quickly to our presentation that we're going to do at two o'clock this afternoon. 
We have several documents that went out to the full legislature last night. And I just want to uh, make sure that our committee is completely clear uh, with the documents. Um, so if there's questions and then you're in your section, um, you, you know, you'll know um, the directions that you need to go with your responses. Teresa, do you wanna put the CRF one up first, please? Sure. And what I am going to do is I'm going to outline these documents. I'm not going to walk through them line by line by line or we'll be there until Saturday. Uh, they're very self-explanatory, and um, and but then we have to remember our committee sees these things all the time, and so the numbers and and the notations all mean a lot to us because we see them all the time. But when we come to the the Corona uh, Virus Relief Fund appropriations, the CRF appropriations, I'm going to ask members to drop to the back page and to look at box B first. So, Teresa, if you could go to box B on the back page. On the back page? On the last page, oh. yeah. <laughs> yep. It's on the back, I double printed. So, this is where I think that it would be good to start, and it, it shows the 1.25. And then, if you go down to the next two lines, it, it shows what we, uh, what the Joint Fiscal Committee um, had, had, um, within their purview and it was the administration could ask for 75 million in emergency needs when the legislature was not in session or even if we were and it needed to move quickly. And then the next piece, 150,000 were other items that the administration uh, could propose um, that the joint fiscal committee could act on. And so that is the, the 225 million that, that went to the joint fiscal committee and the administrative administration's needs. The next pieces are all actions that we did in June. And it shows the, the bill, not the bill number, but the act number. And um, it, you can see all of the work that we did in June for a total of 826. And so with the 826 in the joint fiscal amount, it was just over 1 billion of the 1.25 that went out the door which left the, the, that left the legislature with 198 million um, to include in our work since we returned in August. So if you take that 198 million and you go to the section just above here, so if go up on the screen, Teresa, to the section just above this right here, stop right here, below the lime green line, you will see that 198 million. That's the, that's the amount that we needed to appropriate in, in our budget. However, there were some other moving pieces. In the Joint Fiscal Emergency Fund, there was 2.5 million that wasn't spent that we brought back to be used in our bill. We were able to use FEMA dollars to cover some CRF money. And so that the FEMA money um, uh, paid for those eligible costs and it freed up an estimate of about 20 million. We do not have a solid number of what the governor's number was. I, I think it's higher than this. Um, it's changed and, and some agencies were, uh, I don't know, planning to use it. So we didn't have a solid number there and I didn't want to guess. Um, and so we used 20 million because that is what the house used uh, as a number for FEMA eligible expenses. And then in Act 108, the municipal um, borrowing bill that we put out to help uh, municipalities, that time frame, that, that time limit has gone past and all of the uh, applications came in. It left 2.7 million of, of those total dollars. And so that's why our 198 turned into uh, 223.549 million. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you think people on the floor are going to follow me on that? No, I see a no. No, but they'll understand that we balanced. Okay, but so go to no. the, top of the next page. No go to the top, the top of the front page, Teresa. Kitty? Yes? I was asked that question. I explained it without this sheet to someone and they understood it. So I think you'll be fine. Okay, good. Yay. I think it's helpful. 
So the, the sheet here shows that in the budget bill, the very top box, these are all the CRF dollars that we used in the budget. The governor had proposed 18 plus million. The reason it's 41 is because we used additional money to secure general fund for the Vermont State Colleges. And so we found areas where there were eligible costs that CRF money would fit the definition that we felt very comfortable with within public safety and the health department. And uh, the need for the state colleges was 23.8 million. And when we took, um, when we did the swap with the health department, they needed an additional bump of CRF money to cover eligible costs. So it was just over 24 CRF in that whole construct. And, um, and with the transportation pieces that were swapped out. So the governor had 18 and then we did another 24 and that, and you know, there's some odd numbers there, 18 plus and 24 plus. And that's where um, in our big bill, we see 41 million of CRF dollars marbled throughout the bill in different appropriations where CRF expenses, we found eligible expenses and we use these dollars to uh, pay for them. And it freed up some general fund um, for us to uh, close a budget without making reductions in programs and services. The only difference is the governor used CRF for the state colleges uh, if the guidance changed. And um, instead, we found where CRF could be used and then gave the state colleges the general fund. We just did a, a swap. Do you think that will be clear? Kitty? Yes. Um, I know that we have said that the Gov had 18 marbled throughout the budget. Mm -hmm. If you look at that line item, so thinking about your presentation, the bottom total appropriation section says 16.9. So you need to put those two numbers oh. together. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to, thank you. I'm going to have to, uh, I always thought the number was 18 million and either I'm wrong with the number or there's another million plus. Um, and is Steve on, Teresa, thank you, Mary, for looking at that number. I never even paid attention to that 16.9. Yeah. I can ask Steve to jump in. Yeah, when Adam did his presentation, I'm sure Adam used the number 18 because I have it in my notes several yeah. times. So we've, uh, we've talked about 18, but... Yep, thank you. Excellent yeah. point, Mary. And I will uh, get that straightened out. So then the next, yep. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it's the unused that 2.5 that he I don't know. I'm just now I'm just speculating. I'll be quiet. Okay. So let's go down to the one time. And part of the budget bill also includes the remainder um, of the CRF dollars. We use dollars within. Uh, the budgets, uh, you know, our budget sections, but then the committees of jurisdiction worked with our committee members, and these were all of the uh, additional CRF dollars uh, that we chose that that now uh, spends the 1.25 million. And these were within that we worked with within the committee of jurisdiction, and some that we brought to the table from our committee. And. Um, and I think that people will remember if they're in uh, the education committee about the independent colleges in UVM and the need for the pre-K through 12 system. And this is where that would be. Um, Mike Marcotte's committee, the ACCD, the 100 million is here and his committee can, can speak to those needs. Uh, the healthcare committee can see their 1 million for health equity and all of those are listed and then the last piece at the very bottom are um, our set-asides. And we did set aside 15 million for the hazard pay bill. Uh, we know that um, this is a work in progress and this is an unusual unsettled year. The, the ground is, is moving constantly. Uh, that can move between 15 million to 22 million. And um, we will have to make adjustments or there's a possibility of additional FEMA monies that will um, offset or make available CRF money. So there's still lots of moving pieces. And that is what, if you keep up a little bit, Teresa, 
so we can see the waterfall there. Uh, we have set aside the 15 million um, for um, uh, eligible use for hazard pay. And then the governor had some other pieces in his waterfall. We took care of the VSC bridge and did an alternative. And then the other pieces, um, the um, Secretary of State, um, the Australian ballots, it's a, it's a 21 issue. And so it doesn't fit the guidance. That's why it was in his waterfall. And to tie the money up, uh, you know, we, we have used it up above. And um, if there's guidance changes or more money that comes in, we can make adjustments. The military uh, spring tuition we, um, we is reflected above. We made the decision to reflect that. Um, and the uh, agency of administration- Kitty, that was yeah. spring tuition. We did the fall, we did oh, nothing with you. the spring. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for yep. noticing that, Peter. And that's the same issue. It's 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 beyond, and and so it doesn't fit the eligibility criteria at this time. And the grant porthole, there was testimony um, uh, we had sent in. Um, I had asked actually from the Joint Fiscal Committee to understand some of the um, IT projects more. And uh, Dan Smith, who is our IT person on contract in the Joint Fiscal Office, wrote back about this. And um, we, the, the um, so when it went out to the policy committees for, um, you know, to, to be considered the recommendation from the joint fiscal office, the IT individual was this is really a larger policy question and decision. And uh, so it's probably a January issue uh, that, that needs more time and att attention. And there were some timing issues involved there. Can I just ask what the, what's the ERP solution? Uh, that was another one that um, that came to the uh, Joint Fiscal Office, and uh, Marty, you can speak. Can you speak to the this IT project that ADS wanted to do the ERP? I don't remember the ERP. Are yes, you... ERP means Enterprise Resource something or other. I can't remember. Um, and they had originally asked for five that I think perhaps JFC is maybe still looking at, but another 10 was to extend, it's for the human resources department. It's the first five they asked for was to help them with onboarding employees and performance management. And then, and that's a shorter term project. The remaining 10 was a longer term project. So that was partially the problem because it was, it would take many months to, to implement the $10 million, which would modernize the pay systems, the accounts receivable systems within the human resources department. And uh, I remember Dan the Smith, testimony. number yeah. one, felt that number one, it could not be done in a short amount of time. So timing and guidance changes were needed for uh, these waterfall pieces. Thank you, Marty. So that is the CRF piece. And then if we can go quickly, Teresa, to the highlights. Um, um, Kitty, can we just answer one question for you? Sure. I'm sorry, about what you had at the top of the sheet, the 16.9. Yeah, yeah um, Steve just sent me a text. And in the B section right underneath, we, there is 1.5, just a little bit more, Teresa. Oh, there you go. 1557438. That would, that, if you add those two numbers together, for the transportation COVID expenses, it'll get you up to the 1855 that we were talking about before. Well, why is that one down there, the AOT? Piece? It's actually appropriated in the B section. It's um, in the one-time list. That's where it was where it was put okay. in the bill. So if those are the two numbers that add up to your 18. Yeah. Yeah, it's one-time money. So that they we appropriated in the one-time list. Okay, even though all the above is really one time too. It, uh, yeah, but I guess that there was a, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, it's, I think it may have been, uh, you know, that's a, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I'll try to figure out why that one time was unique. I think there's a reason, but I will write certain. Okay. Thank you. If, the, if that comes up, I'll just um, relate if they heard the 18 million that those pieces added together. Thank you. Hey, hey, Kitty. Yep. 
Nada? Kitty, uh, just a general kind of question. This afternoon for the Caucus of the Whole, when you're referring to these documents, we, will we have the capacity to have them actually show on the screen or are we relying on people to pull up these documents individually? I cannot answer that. Mer Teresa, can you answer that? Will we be able to put these up on the screen? I think so. Yes, we should be able to. So um, I, I don't know the protocol for the clerk's office. I, I just don't know. I mean, that's something somebody will, I can ask Bill McGill. Okay. Or, um, or somebody could ask Jill yeah. what the person yeah, Maida, is. That's a, that's a great point. Um, I, I Maida, do you want to, will you run this down with Jill and see sure. if- Sure. I will. My, my concern would be my concern would be that you could be halfway through this before some people even find the chart. Yep, you're right. Yeah, I'll okay. ask Jill. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And if we could go to the highlight sheet now, and we do have a bill number. Is it on the new highlight sheet? It's nine sixty nine. Oops, uh, Linda, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I had a question about the highlight sheet, as a matter of fact, so glad you moved there. Uh, in your second paragraph, it we, says uh, that a list of CR investments will be found on the back side of the document. It's the second paragraph. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to change that. I don't seven see any time. <laughs> that was a separate document in the email to members last night, and I just need to adjust that sentence. I just haven't had time. Okay, so that sentence is going to come out. Thank you, Linda, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, um, Mary had brought up a piece. And, um, Teresa took copious notes and, and to say that, which we really need to state, this is a balanced budget that is consistent with house spending priorities. And spending priorities would be, like, um, you know, if I'm asked, what are these spending priorities? One would be uh, justice reinvestment. You know, that bill passed the house and, and um, it wasn't in it, and and we made, um, you know, we, you know, we made the decision to reinvest those general dollars into our justice system. If you can think of other good examples, that you know, I'll let you guys bring. Mm -hmm. them. But, um, the other piece is it invests, it keeps our reserves full. It invests in local economies. With I mean, look at the CRF money. We're you know putting millions and millions into our local economies. It does not cut programs and it protects vulnerable Vermonters. And then these were the key, uh, some of the key spending priorities that we had gone over yesterday. So does that do this, does this do this, um, does this work for the committee as long as we take out, Linda uh, had seen that edit that needs to be done on a list of investments on the back side. And Teresa, you have the bill number at the top. Thank you. Teresa or Kitty, I think that this, your comments on the highlights are outstanding. As someone who used to be a newspaper reporter and wanted to know just the facts, this is very, very good. It, I think people will be able to read it and really get a good feel for what we're talking about. For And you're gonna do that today during the Caucus of the Whole, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I think it's great. So that's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you. and. Um, Maria gets all the kudos. Um, Yay, Maria. And then, um, um, Mary, you had your hand up? Yeah, Kitty, fifth bullet from the bottom talks about court dis diversion. And it says, in response to lost revenues, are we supposed to be talking about revenue replacement? Uh, um, yeah, let's take that off. Funds uh, 162,000. For court version, uh, well, actually, this is general fund. This is general fund, Mary. Oh, general. So, sorry, never yeah. mind. <laughs> sorry. Okay, and then uh, who else has a hand up? Oh, uh, can Diane? I? Do, thank you. I didn't quite catch what Linda's comment. Where Where is that edit? So I'll just mark it. Second paragraph, the last, the last sentence in the second paragraph. A list of investments. Oh. Found on the back side, which is not, not there. Okay. Now the next document is the operating statement, and 
Um, I looked at this and I was like, what? Katie, Katie. Oh, sorry, Dave. Yes, go ahead. Dave? I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to jump in. And yep. this is just, um, this, this is a balanced budget, that line, yes. right? Are you following with me? Yes, I am. Invest in local economies, does not cut programs, and protects vulnerable Vermonters. Um, when I sat here, I said, well, it preserves services for vulnerable Vermonters. If I weren't on this committee, um, and depending like what kind that. of mood I was in, yeah. I, I would, I would, um, I would give a list of all the things that we're unable to do to help them, including raises for their caregivers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, probably no one else, perhaps no one else um, is of that mind on the floor, because you could argue, well, you know, uh, preserving services protects them. Yes, it does. But any, anyways, it's just, uh, I doubt if that will come up, but if it does, I think we need to be able to speak to it. Well, I think that we have plenty of room there, and I think we could write preserve services to protect vulner, uh, vulnerable Vermonters. We're, we're preserving services to protect. It's a, it may seem like a nuance, but it's not to me. Okay, so do, would you agree that we can do preserve services to protect vulnerable Vermonters? Yeah, I, I don't know if we need to say protect. Sure. We want to say preserve services for vulnerable Vermonters. Okay, either way, which way yeah. do you want to go? I'm going to make this. Dave. Uh, Take out the word protect and put preserve services. Okay, preserve services. And I just want to go. Thank you. Committee, do I Thank have you. Do Sorry I have to be so anal and picky. <laughs> no, it's important, Dave. And does anyone have an opposition for uh, preserving services to vulnerable Vermonters instead of protects? Hearing no opposition. Maria, would you put that in? or Teresa, whoever. Is yeah, I'll talk to Teresa. One of us will fix it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Dave. It is an important distinction. Uh, anything else before we leave this page and go to the operating statement? Okay, let's go to the operating statement. And I was like, ah, what, what? you know? So the operating statement is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on move this use this one backwards too, like I did with CRF. I like how it's done. It just makes sense to do it. Are you talking about the GF balance sheet? GF summary and outlook. Yes. This is just general fund. Okay, so um, we're not talking about CRF or transportation or special funds. This is a GF. Uh, sheet. Okay, so um, what I was going to do is bring the attention first um, to the very bottom where the reserves are listed. And this shows that our reserves are intact. We did not have to use them in the steady state budget. This is building capacity for difficult decisions in January. And it shows the totals um, of FY20, that gray is the or is the early bill that we that we got, and then we have the restated budget, and then we have the house's decision in the far right column. So um, as you can see, the governor's um, proposal and our proposal, we are he didn't use uh, reserves, we didn't use reserves, and we're counting the same amount for the number of reserves, 22. $228 million in reserves, and it, it shows the funds. Then I'm going to bring the, uh, the caucus back up to the very top, and I'm not going to go through this line by line, but there's a couple really important lines. The very first line where it says current law revenue, that amount, the, that is from the official forecast. The general fund from the official forecast coming into this budget and it agrees with the governors because we have um, a joint uh, agreed upon fiscal forecast is $1.4 billion. And then the next line down, just so that people understand the next line down, that 181.1 1 
is due to deferred taxes. Remember our taxes were pushed out in uh, April and this is the July number, the 181.1. And then we have all of those uh, small moving pieces, you know, with reversions and direct applications and property transfer tax. Um, and if you look at the property transfer tax, our number is different than the governor's uh, by just a bit because um, he had 14.6, we had 14.5, and that is because we uh, uh, created a capacity within, within VHCB for the grant writer of $100,000. And that's why that number is different. Um, the reversions, we were able to revert a bit more money, $400,000 more. So that's the only difference there. And then uh, it drops down to the total revenue of 1.7 billion. And it's very close to the governor's number, except for that small reversion and the in our and our priority to um, fund the the grant writer. Uh, the next piece are all of our appropriations, which include base appropriations, the Pay Act, and it brings us down to a subtotal. And then we have a placeholder for uh, other one-time appropriations, which uh, our one-time appropriations are higher than the governor's. And Steve, I need some help there. What would account for that, that higher one-time appropriation? Is that all the state? No, that wouldn't be the state colleges. Steve, I need help with that line. Are you there, Steve? Aha, uh -huh. I'll come back to that when no, Steve- Which line were you saying? Um, other one-time appropriations where the governor had 11.3 and ours is 25.9. I think that what? is the, um, the uh, isn't that just the one-time appropriations in your bill? And I, um, we haven't itemized those, but uh, it's uh, uh, the biggest one. Uh, I'm, trying to know think why. I'm trying to uh, think the push was. Marty, do you have a thought on this one? What the big... I, I have to, I wonder if the biggest no. one of that is the um, uh, the um, uh, state, Vermont State Colleges, which is 23.8. But I let me double check that. Yeah, that's what I wondered if that was the Vermont State College. So I will have an explanation for that one on the floor. Yeah. But our, okay. total, yeah. our total appropriations, uh, the governor was 1.661, we're 1.666. Uh, Marty, now you had your hand. I'm sorry. Yes, I. Uh, why do we have two lines that says other bills? Oh, yeah. I didn't mean different numbers in them. I don't um, understand well, that. Because one is the governor's uh, other bills that he was accounting for, the 5.1, and ours is uh, 7.6. And that's because we added money. I believe that that accounts for some of the added money to the stimulus equity. He had the 2 million and plus he may have been accounting differently for other bills. So the other bills we have in the 7.6 is the 5 million of total. No, this is all GF, Steve. So we have, yeah, 5 million because we had 5 million for, of course that is a 5 million for, um, the stimulus equity bill, the 5.88 is a placeholder for the climate bill, the 1 million for um, the primary care piece, and that's 5, 6, 50. Steve, give me the extra million where the other bill is. What is the other bill? Well, Kitty, while he's waiting. Yeah. Um, the difference between the governor and us on this equity stimulus is only three million, not five, because he had two already in. Right, right. Uh, which which would be reflected in these numbers, but he may have reflected. I'm not sure what he what he was accounting for in the other bills. So I do need Steve to um, walk us through how we got to those two numbers. And when he gets back on, we'll go back to the other bills. I'll also have to, I'll get back the, to you on that. The governor's, right. so if you could, the governor's equity was 2 million in one time. Right. As opposed to a bill. That's right. You're right about that. 
So uh, Steve, we're going to need, um, I'm going to need a sheet that explains the other one-time appropriations and the other bills that make up those numbers and how we're different from uh, the administration's proposal. Do you see where I mean? Teresa, can you highlight the two yeah, lines? Yeah, and I, I may bring Stephanie on to do that, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Okay. okay, and then as soon as we get that, we will uh, put that out to the committee. And then the next piece are just the differences in, in uh, you know, what we agreed with and um, what was proposed by the administration with the transfers. We Did didn't he? transfer to ERAF, well, that was a decision we made. Uh, we transferred um, the 1.7 from the tobacco litigation in our bill. And Steve, that would have been, um, the, the 1.7 was, or two pieces, I believe. Are you 1.6 with... was out of the Attorney General. Okay, and then where was the other 100,000, Steve? <clears throat> so which one are we asking about? We are asking about the transfer from the tobacco litigation fund. 1.6 additional came in from the Attorney General, but was that one? It's actually a rounding error because it's 1.656 that came okay. in from the Attorney Thank General, you. and so it rounds to 1.7. Thank you. Kitty? Yep, that was additional money that came in from the AG after yeah. the governor had presented his statement budget. Peter? So to answer your other slash one-time appropriations of general fund totaling 25.9, all of that can be found in the B1100A section of the, of the uh, web report. The mm -hmm. biggest pieces are the Vermont State College system restructuring, mm -hmm. the dam whistle, I had to say that, sorry. <laughs> uh, and the, uh, the, the CUD broadband of 1.5 million. So if you look at the, at the Vermont State College restructuring of 23.8 plus the CUD, uh, the, the CUD broadband of 1.5, you're almost there. And then there's a bunch of small numbers. Thank you, Peter. So if we go to B11100A. B1100A, they'll find it. And that's our whole list of uh, one-time yeah. appropriations. Get, Thank you, Peter. Did you get to those that this big? So Stephanie is on in case you want to do the other bills. Yes. But Bob, are you asking me a question? Nope, I think he was talking to somebody else. Okay, let's, uh, while Stephanie's on, let's go through the other bills. Uh, Stephanie, can you give us um, some details? Okay. I apologize, my phone is ringing. I just have to get rid of this phone for a second. Okay, that's fine. We okay. all... Uh, Trent Fiscal, this is Stephanie. I can't talk, I'm on, a, I'm on a Zoom, okay? All right, bye. <laughs> oh. uh, so other bills, are, are you talking to the difference between 5.1 and 7.6? Is that yes. what you're asking? Yes. So in the governor's list, the other bills are uh, the $5 million that was in the Q1 bill um, and the, um, a tiny bit of per diem money for something. Um, oh, in, the five, the five million. Refresh my memory in the Q. Five million for state oh, college bridge money. Q one. Oh, okay, okay. That was ours too. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's part. That five million is part of your seven point six. Yes. The other thing that's part of your seven point six is the two million dollars general fund for the migrant workers. That $2 million in the governor's was part of a list in his big bill. It wasn't in another oh, bill. Okay. Okay. And then the last piece of it is the global warming. Those are the differences. Okay. So it's the 5 million for the state college bridge from Q1, right? Yep. And it's the 2 million in a separate bill for uh, the additional money for the, um, for the stimulus equity. For yeah, for the general fund portion of that five million. Okay, GF. And then it's the five hundred eighty-six thousand dollars for the um, five eighty-six for climate. And then there's that little there's a little tiny bit of per diem in there somewhere too. The same okay. as the governor. Yep. It's just that they were in different places. You you've moved things into other bills that were in the big bill, etc. <laughs> Thank you. J uh, just you're welcome. Your areas. Thank you so much. Okay. Are you finished with me? Never. Okay. <laughs> but at least for now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. So that was 
um, any questions on, I think that was, I mean, that totally cleared up the, the, the um, 5.1 versus 7.6. And then um, the other pieces are all uh, very clear. Um, and then we already talked about the reserves. Any, any other questions on this sheet? And I'm just afraid this is gonna open up a gazillion questions on the floor, but- um, That's good. You know, it's, it's, um, it's there. And then the last piece that will be on the floor, Teresa, do you have the appropriations by funds? It shows from 16, okay. FY 16, 20, 21 restated. It's all the percentages. Yeah. The um, general fund increase, the total spending of all the budgets. It looks like this. No, no, we don't have that. No. Okay, no. and that one. I, I, I haven't sent it around yet. I just got it completed this morning. I'm going to okay. put it on the screen and then I will send it to everybody and put it in the OneDrive. And it has been posted on uh, GFO. Thank you. And Kitty, yes. Kitty, while things are getting squared away here, um, message with regard to this afternoon, um, following up on can we get these up on the screen, these documents while you're speaking about them? Um, the response is um, the clerk uh, says they can do that, but want you to be aware it would be a static screen, so no one would be able to see either you or anyone asking questions. If you're okay with a static screen without your picture or the picture of whoever it might be asking a question, if you're okay with that, then they can put up the documents as you're speaking about them. Sure. So what we would do is go through a section at a time and then take it down and ask questions. So I should let them know that it's okay? Yeah, yeah okay, because I think you. people will be totally confused if it's not. Yeah, yeah. and I'll ask, it, I'll ask Jill to find out. So what, what we need to do at our end to make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is, this is um, Marty, go ahead before I go over this sheet. Are, are we going to have a sheet on the Ed Fund Outlook as well? We have General Fund Outlook, Transportation Fund Outlook. People I don't are know wonder where, about is the Ed Fund. where is the Ed Fund Outlook, Steve? Do we have an Ed Fund Outlook? We, and I'm not going to go over the T Fund Outlook uh, because yeah. I'm not going to we, let the Transportation <laughs> Committee do that. We could put one up. It's a it's a good question. We don't always do it, but um, it's probably not a, given we're giving them the full court press. Maybe we should. Well, it's However, a whole budget. I think we need to include it. So uh, in my presentation, Marty, I'll make reference to the Ed Fund Outlook and the T Fund Outlook, but I'm going to, I'm really going to focus the budget in because I think those are going to have to be questions that, that go out to the Transportation Committee and the Education Committee, but yes. Yeah, the problem with the Ed Fund Outlook is it's even more, um, it's very long and very convoluted. And I think that one could really raise the issues you're raising about questions that we would have to refer to someone else. So, um, uh, but let me call, let me talk to Mark and see what we can do with that. Okay, perfect, Steve, thank you. So on the, uh, you can see the lines for 16, 20 governors restated and where we are with our budget. So the general fund, I wanna zoom in first. And, and the number I want to go to is the FY20 number that is 1.607. And we have to remember that that's an artificially low number because our tax revenue didn't come in until the next fiscal year. And also we know the pandemic caused havoc with restaurants and hotels. And so that impacted uh, tax, you know, um, tax income that, that typically comes in for rooms and meals. And um, we do not tax food, which is a good thing in Vermont, but if, if we look at where most of the spending was in that last part of the year, there was much more spending on food than there even was on gasoline, hotels, restaurants, and all of that. So we have an artificially low number there. And then in the governor's restated budget, you will see that that number um, um, it, uh, jumps significantly and then ours moves up uh, a, a tiny bit over his due to the moving pieces. But the general fund growth from 20 to 21, the year over year growth is 3.7. 
And, and that's just due to the unusual nature of what COVID-19 did for fiscal year 20 uh, compared to the uh, a, a great amount of one-time money that popped into 21. And Steve, did I accurately, you're not listening to me, so I'm gonna say I- I, I am listening, yes, and you were right. It's, it's, okay. it's uh, a lot of it is that, that factor. The difference between the governor and you is about 0.2%. Um, or, you know, the difference, between, the difference of $5 million there is, given our general fund is 1.6, is between 0 0.2 and 0.3%. So the governor's growth rate would have been around 3.4. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know where the rounding error would have been. So you're mm -hmm. exactly right. It has to do with the, the when the money came in and when we spent it. And, uh, then hey, Kitty. Yes. Kitty, I'm sorry. I might have missed this. Why is it FY16? Uh, we all uh, have a five-year look back. Oh, okay. That's the, got it. Thank you. So Over in the right. Five, yeah. It's just a five-year look back. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry. And then if you go down to total appropriations, the 7.1 is a very big budget, but we have to remember in that 7.1, we have $1.25 billion of federal money uh, that come in. And, and if you look at the federal fund and CRF fund, the percent change of what typically would come in went up 358%. Where, where are you? I'm looking at, see that 358% oh. is due to the unusual nature of the amount of uh, federal dollars that came, into, um, that came into the state. And some of those we spent in fiscal year 20 and some we spent in fiscal year 21. But uh, the year-over-year -year growth is, is huge because most of them landed in 21. And so we wouldn't typically have a $7.1 billion budget, but it's, it's due to the large amount of the, um, uh, federal dollars that came in. And um, that is, if we look at all state funds, um, that is... Uh, all state, uh, other, uh, let's see, if we look at all state funds and include the education fund, uh, it's a 3.5% um, growth and the five year uh, growth is 2.7 from uh, fiscal year 16. So we've always done a year over year growth and a five year range. And that is as much detail as I'm going to go into. Uh, people ask for a line by line. You know, the transportation in TIB, I would send to um, whoever's here from the transportation committee. They're dropping like flies. Uh, may, I think the chair may be back, so that would be great. And then um, the Ed Fund, I would uh, give that to the Ed Fund committee to, um, to comment on or to the Ways and Means Committee. Yeah, so, we will be posting an Ed Fund balance sheet. Okay, thank you, Steve. Any questions from any members on this sheet? And as you can see, this has already taken up a lot of the hour time uh, for the caucus of the whole. And so I'm going to try to narrow it as much as we can and make sure that there's time that, you know, we really get to the highlight sheet about the things that our budget does. Um, and I think I will start with that. What does the committee think? Mary. Well, I, I was just thinking about where to focus. And I think the vast majority of members are interested in policy and understand things through narrative rather than through balance sheets. And so I would tend to focus on the um, the narrative of the work of the of the budget rather than the balance sheet um, perhaps hitting very high level the summary statements mm -hmm. on each of the different balance sheets but not walking them through no. how, how it adds up well yeah. even to the degree that you walked us through right now you were explaining to us but i think i would do kind of here it is at the top and here it is at the bottom, moving yeah. on to the next thing. 
Yeah, and the operating statement, I, I, I think you're right that you know, the, the money that, that came in, this 1.7, and the money that went out is 1.6, and, and all of the pieces are moving pieces, but I do want to reference the reserves. Uh, but, you know, in, to allow for time, I, you're right, that's the, we're only going to be able to do the very highlights. But I do want to spend most of the time on the, um, the you know, our, rest, our restated budget um, that, that, you know, that shows the investments that we made and it's a steady state. Uh, Kimberly, Mary, were you done? Kimberly? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, I found that last chart extremely helpful when you, it's the percentage terms, which gives you, and it also just highlights um, the idea that this is not a normal year. Remember the tax deferral, look at the huge percentage in CRF funds. So I, for what it's worth, I personally found that that last chart, particularly the percent column as a nice setup, um, but that's just, that's me. That's what's going to happen on the floor. Some are going to be interested in the narrative. Some are going to want the detail and, um, and we have an hour, so. We'll see how it we'll see how it goes, uh, Dave. You know, I I was thinking. I just thought this was a great hour, a great presentation. It was really helpful information. Granted, I've been at this table for many months, so it's easier for me to follow the many. But what I was thinking is, you could always say, uh, members, for those who want a deeper dive, listen to our YouTube video watch this video of what we just did and that will give you a, a much deeper appreciation than any of us could cover on the floor of the house it's it's difficult but you know i often follow committees and i i slow it i watch it twice etc and some of our members appreciate that detail it's right here captured on youtube with what you just did kitty just I just my comments i'm writing this note right now dave i think that's an excellent idea uh, to, to um, dive, uh, watch uh, this morning's uh, House Appropriations Committee YouTube video. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so um, I'll see everybody on the floor at two for uh, our walkthrough. Yeah. And, and um, oh, Kitty, yep. just FYI, my last message to Jill was, does Teresa need to forward our documents clerk or what? Um, I don't have a response yet, but I'll stay on that and be in touch with Teresa to yeah, get them squared I away. Get, I can make a list and a link to each document. Um, we ha I have to add the growth chart and when I get the education fund outlook. So um, I'll make a list and send it directly to you, Maida, and you can forward it on to Jill or whoever. Oh, okay. Uh, good idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. And um, Peter, you've been really good with timing. If there's four documents, um, and I do one at a time, and we open up to questions after each document, uh, I think we're going to have to time this. Otherwise, you know, if in each document doesn't need 15 minutes, you know, the 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 um, the summary sheet's going to meet, need more time. And the, I would say the CRF bill is going to be more time. And I would just leave, um, you know, 10 minutes for those last two documents and, and give the, the major time. So when, if you would just think in your head about a timing and uh, I, will, I will just say to members that um, if they have additional questions to reach out to any one of us to answer these questions and, and we can uh, walk them through any of the sheet in, individually. And Kitty, I think if you stick with, with uh, Mary's recommendation, um, you're going to avoid really going deep on any of the documents other than, other than you know, where the policy leads us. And that'll, that will give the members time to ask a few questions, probably not all they're going to want to ask, but uh, we can handle that on the floor when we get there. Yep. Sounds good. Hey, Kitty. And yes, Chet? If members have questions, tell them to ask anybody but Chet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> ABC, huh? Anybody but Chip. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> I might, I might say that, Chip. <laughs> okay. So, uh, work, and I think that we're ready to go for the caucus of the whole. And um, is everybody good with their five, their fifth, their five-minute presentations? Uh,
you you know who you're yielding to you know uh, where you used to sit at the table. We haven't been there in a that's, long time. That, that's for tomorrow, right? That's for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that if you are going to yield to for when questions start coming up, except for the transportation piece, because Bob, uh, Tim Corcoran's going to walk through that as part of our, you know, like a member of our committee. But when make sure that you reach out to anyone that you're going to yield to to answer questions. You know, so Dave, if you're going to answer all the equity, health equity questions on CRF, terrific. But if you're going to turn it over to Bill, make sure he knows. You know, I've just used you as an example because you were at my eyesight in the screen. So don't catch any chair or other committee member off guard. Make sure they know uh, they're, they're getting their questions. And Chip, I don't know, are you going to handle the ed questions or are you going to go to Kate? You'll decide that. I don't need to know. Okay, uh, Bob? Yeah, I don't have, uh, and I don't think I remember ever seeing one, a list of uh, members' presentations and in order, if you know what I mean. So I know when I'm coming up. There is one. We're, we're, we're going to go around the table. I'm going to start and we're going to go clockwise. It's going to go me to Peter to Maida to Marty, to Diane, to Diane. Jeff. Oops, I skipped that around. <laughs> then we're gonna jump over the table to uh, Linda, and Linda will do Kimberly, and Kimberly will do Chip, and then you're at the end of that side, so Chip yields to you, and then you yield to Mary, and then Mary yields back to me. So we're gonna go right around the table, and you get one shot to get all your information out. And so, Chip will I yield do, to you. I, I do all my sections in one sitting. Yes, you do. Yep. And you get five minutes. And the only difference in yours is we have a transportation bill in the budget. So you're going to have a few. Yield the Corcoran for that. And he'll yield I'll, that. I'll do my little piece. Yep. All but transportation. I, I may talk just a whisker about transportation, but then it's going to yep. Tim and he's, he'll be about two minutes. Perfect. And then he make sure he yields back to you, okay? He goes back to me and I go back to Mary from there. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep, depending on how you want to structure, you may want to do transportation first and then finish up your other budgets and then yield to Mary. However okay. you want to do, it's up to you. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, Mary? I keep forgetting that. No, you won't. We won't let you. <laughs> sure. I was Mary? thinking of putting the section numbers of my budget in the chat when we do the presentation. So we've talked about how to refer people to the different sections. And ra I, I, rather than saying the words, I was wondering about saying you can look in the chat and you know find the section numbers. I'm curious, and it looks like it's possible to do that. Um, um, I'm curious what you guys think. Can I interject yeah. for a second? Uh, just no. a possibility. People are hating uh, it. I well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a bad idea, except for um, I think that the public needs to see that. And that public can't see the oh, chat. Right. All right, never mind. It's just a thought. I, mean, I could no, be wrong. I, I, I'm watching everybody's face. They think yeah, it's a terrible idea. Depending on what kind of device you have, you can't see or get to the chat easily. Chat. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And, and if we're live streaming, are we still live streaming on NPR for four sessions on VPR? Yes. Sorry, on VPR. If we're still live streaming, then they, uh, people listening would have to um, the section numbers. It's a good thought, Mary, but I was more curious how you were going to present and, and be typing your seconds at the same time. I was going to do it in advance. You can drop a document into the chat. Well, you're more technologically savvy than the rest of us. <laughs> And I think some members <laughs> might get confused how to go and look. I, 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 like I would be left behind on that one, but it's a good thought. Me too. Okay. Quick question, if I may, Katie. Sure, Dave. 
Yes, Kitty? Yes. Um, I was going to do my presentation in alphabetical order based on what's been assigned to us, um, but maybe others are going in numerical order. Does it matter? Nope. Just, just Does it matter get... what order I present my sections? No, I don't think so. As long... I wanted, I just organize it. Just give people Doesn't time. Matter, just, give people, just give people time to get to that section. You know, if they if they're moving through a document, give them you know give the you know pause for a couple seconds, um, and we're going to use the calendar yep. uh, for page numbers. Um, yeah, but the calendar won't be out till Thursday. Thank you. Got it. The calendar won't be out until. I know. It'll be Thursday. out. Tomorrow. Won't it be out tonight? Today, to, maybe tonight. Yeah. Oh, late tonight maybe it should tonight. be out. Yeah. 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 Hopefully late after tonight. We get off, after we get off the floor. Yeah. I don't think we have time. I feel like I'm not going to have time to give people a chance to get there. If I'm going to be in five minutes, I can't wait for people to get there. I'm going to have to say BOB uh, 511 uh, and then talk what I'm going to talk about it and move on. I think it will be helpful to use the page numbers in the calendar. I think people will, and, and if today I will tell them that we will be using the page numbers from the calendar and moving quickly. Okay. Um, I, can, I, I will can mention that. Just can't wait very long for them to get there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kimmy, I was not even going to mention you. budgets. I was just going to say that this, these are where I'm responsible. I'm only going to talk about the budgets that have significant impacts. And I'm not even going to talk about or even reference B106 finance. I'm just not even going to go there. I yeah, that's how I was going to do it. OK. Um, I, I think I, I think however you feel it, it works okay. for you. And then yeah, if that's... you have a question, then you can then go back while you find this question here. You know, yeah, I... the, only, the only thing that I find as a gap is that by not referencing it at all, they won't know. Uh, well, they might see it in the book and say, who's got B106? And that would be me. And I know that. Okay. So there, there's there's numbers, there's language, and then CRF. So always yeah. do this big CRF spending last. And don't worry about the big CRF that's marbled through the whole budget. I'm going to cover that in my opening remarks. Except that I'm going to talk about the commerce CRF money, correct? Uh, yep, you are. And and then, and yes, the hundred million. I just meant the 18 million that the governor put in that 18 million. There's a little bit here and there. Uh, I'll mention all that that's all marbled throughout the budget, but then that larger appropriation you guys will all highlight. Marty will do the CUDS. You will do the hundred million. Dave will do the health equity. Um, Mary will do the DAs. I'm doing the adult days, meals adult on wheels. Days. Was on wheels. Yeah. Peter will do the state colleges. Chip will do, do education. It. Yep. You'll do uh, high, oh, and Peter will do higher ed and you'll do the pre K through 12. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you say the stuff that's marbled throughout, do you mean the stuff that we went over that was the new CRF that, that was on this sheet? Yeah. You know, like, um, like that 16.9. Where, where there were just swap outs for things, but Peter may want to talk about um, the 74, the 74 um, million for um, the military. Kitty, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even really gonna mention it unless somebody wants to know why it's it's yeah, not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all we're doing is, is changing money. There's really no nothing else involved. Yeah. So we don't I don't see it as a substantial change. Um, and this is just really swapping out CRF money for a uh, general fund for eligible Correct. expenses. So it's, it's not going like to take me. No, it's going to take me time to explain the Vermont State College. And, and you know, I've got to start with the rules as yep. to the reason why it's going to allow us to do this. And that's what I'm going to do and work my way through that. And then I've got to talk about the, uh, the, the newborn uh, piece not being extended yep. this year. So, you know, yep. it's, that's going to be most of my five minutes right there. Um, the only question some of you may get is, you know, how were they able to find eligible costs in DCF reach up for five million? And so, Kimberly, if if you know, you can give some examples of how CRF uh, was able to pay for uh, some of those eligible costs, or within um, the 
criminal justice training council, there was uh, 13,000, you know, what, what kind of eligible costs were they? I, I have the list. Good. And the clean water initiative, Marty, that would be yours if somebody asked, well, how would there be eligible costs there? So make sure you know what your eligible cost is. Uh, Peter has a big section of them with uh, BGS. There was a lot there. And you know, it's it's either the work they're doing or, you know, cleaning, sanitizing. Can I can I add on there? Because when I looked at tax, they they actually indicated that 87% of their staff was working remotely. Yeah. I mean, that's all a CRF cost. Not yep. maybe not their payroll, but the cost of actually setting it up and doing certain things to be able to work remotely. Yeah. And then there's others that the actual work was you know, CRF related that some employees would typically be doing other state work, we're actually doing CRF work. And then there's a whole bunch of, well, mostly with Peter with sanitation and, and safety. Which, which I'm not even gonna mention. Is anybody gonna give a big nod to like our state employees and, and how they, they bucked up during this crisis? Oh. Not, you know, wasn't there, an, wasn't there an all all house resolution? What happened to that? Yeah, it's okay. Yes. I'm, you know, I'm I, I, I think, you know, but then I think there's a big nod to the speaker for getting all this remote legislation up and working long before other states did. And then there's a big nod to the governor for I think that that you know it, it would just, you know, well, why why wasn't this group? Okay, I just want because I'm not mentioning it in any of my thing about how great they did. So I'm not yeah. talking about it. I don't want to be the only one that doesn't say, hey, you guys did terrific. <laughs> I, I think the state of Vermont has done an incredible job and in, uh, all aspects of it. So we leave it at that. All right, two o'clock. See you then. I got to get some toast and you're ready to go off live. I am. Okay.